Let's go over wave two of the 1995 Star Wars action figures. We went over the first wave, which has a lot of the classic characters from A New Hope. Looks like wave two here is Empire Strikes Back inspired. So we'll open up each figure and check it out closely. It's a little confusing with the waves. Kind of get different images on the backs of the cards of what's wave one, two, three. But I'm going by a guide that says this is wave two and it'll be good for the video. We got bios on the back of all three and this is kind of my nostalgic carding from when I was a kid these are my first Star Wars action figure we got to start with the Fett Man Boba Fett right here uh, supposedly the pictures here are kind of like a prototype outfit before the movies possibly because his blaster is very different in design than what you would see in the movie also it's always very interesting to get little bios and things on a character like Boba Fett that we know more about now but 1995 they didn't know a whole lot Fett wears the armor of the Mandalore Super Commandos, a group of evil warriors who were defeated by the Jedi Knights during the Clone Wars. I don't know if that's very accurate anymore. But it does mention flame projector in his arm. This is before episode 2 showing Jango Fett using that. So the figure, though the wave is kind of suggesting Empire Strikes Back, if I had to guess, and I'm not an expert on the which movie armor has what detail with Boba Fett of Empire Strikes Back versus Return of the Jedi, if I had to say, this one seems more colored like Return of the Jedi, actually, because we have like a full color jetpack, and just some of the other little bits, maybe the gauntlets and some of the different colorings and things on some of his armor plates, the Beskar armor bits, yeah, the pretty solid helmet a kind of stubby antenna but just made it so it didn't get busted off too easy we got the removable jetpack that kind of has like a slot here and a little bit on his back to fit that and then his little kind of scarf cape and then the little braids kind of its own separate piece that clips on you know 90 style clip-on cape. That was kind of cool. You kind of take off Boba Fett's gear and see him a little closer with the armor bits. I seem to have lost the blaster that actually goes with this figure, uh, but this one's fairly similar in design. Can't quite remember whose this came with, so bonus points if you can remember which figure this actually goes to. I want to guess Princess Leia, but I don't know. Or is there a picture? Oh, look at that. Picture on the back of the box right there shows that blaster. So that's Princess Leia's blaster. The Boba Fett one's similar, except the back is just like a straight line. Not quite what's pictured on the box, not quite what's shown in the movie. Kind of a weird accessory in between. Actually would have been cool if they would have got closer to this picture with that kind of shoulder rest on here. But this one's actually one that got a lot of people excited for these 90s figures. Getting a good Boba Fett figure. Maybe it's a little more difficult to come by back in the first Star Wars figures in the 70s and 80s with the rocket controversy and all that business. But definitely one that fascinated me as a kid having as well. It's always something about Boba Fett all this time. So we got Luke Skywalker in his X-Wing pilot gear. You kind of say this is of the first Star Wars movie, and then he is in this a lot more in an Empire Strikes Back, especially using the lightsaber and blaster while he's in his pilot outfit. Of course, this goes really well with the ships that I'd like to go over in their own video here soon, so watch out for that. Check out Luke here with the X-Wing helmet, probably a better likeness in the face since it kind of hides some of the strangeness of these. And then right away here we see the bodies aren't too thick already. A lot of people complain they're like too buff and broad-shouldered, but fairly standard body, especially since this needs to fit in the pilot cockpit <laughs> of the X-Wing. So you get a better body there, and all the flight suit details. His chest plate and the bits on the boot and everything. So it's a pretty solid figure. Again, these are just like six-point articulation figures with the arms, legs, head, and we do get waist. He comes with that kind of Han Solo-ish style blaster he does use in the Empire Strikes Back, pulls it out on Dagobah. Pretty oversized, of course, but again, these are just more meant for the toy aspect before they really started catering hard to the collectors and the scale and everything like that. But even so, the detail on the helmet and stuff, a lot of small details. Coming with the old classic Anakin lightsaber. Well, this hand's a little big and open for the right-handed use, so he probably would be better to hold it in the left hand so he kind of have lightsaber and blaster together. But there's those little knobs that help kind of expand and tighten in there. Uh, so he'll come with this length of lightsaber, or he can come with the extra long, potentially. So <laughs> it's extra long here. Two versions. This is just way too long of a lightsaber. That's too silly of a size. But he could come with it, potentially. 
like a video game upgrade lightsaber extender. So I actually like posing this one with my AT AT walker, like Luke's kind of flying up in there to slice the panel and throw in his grenade. And of course it looks a lot better sitting in that X-Wing fighter from this toy line as well. And lastly, we got Lando that I never got to have as a kid. Now, this one's definitely going to fall in the category of too big and buff. <laughs> but it's kind of cool having like super Lando here. So this is one I actually need to open so I can kind of add him to my collection. I did get to have a Lando from the vintage collection once that came along. Kind of got me back into Star Wars seeing those. He's got a hard plastic cape. Kind of has a version of the Stormtrooper blaster. He probably would have stole when they were running around in Cloud City. And then he has this blaster, which I don't really recognize. It's not really the one pictured on the packaging, per se, with the scope and silver tip. I'm not sure what this one is exactly. But he is pretty huge. He's got freaking abs. <laughs> Lando's like, do you even lift, bro? I'd say a pretty solid likeness, although the stash maybe could be a little less space in there. But I think maybe he did have a little bit of space. Nice blue there. And then the hole in the back for that cape pop in. Doesn't sit on there super great. And then that's going to kind of mess with him posing his arms. And it's heavy on there too. But this is one you probably might want to pose with that stormtrooper blaster more just that he's kind of run and gun in Cloud City trying to help out after he was forced to betray Han Solo. He had no choice all right but kind of always skipped this one because there was just later Lando figures like the General Lando from Return of the Jedi and stuff I was able to get in newer lines but kind of cool to add this one just because it's the one of my childhood and time period in the 90s when I was discovering Star Wars on VHS tape for the first time before episode one came along. But I love showing off the these 90s figures. I did the Wave 1 you can check out and I showcase a lot of these when they have something interesting about them. Either as I get them or from my old collection. I just like to show them off here and a lot of other retro 90s action figure stuff. So if that sounds cool I'll probably see you in the next video.